Hello, everyone. And one more time, welcome to this Taipei Workshop 2021 online edition. My name is Javier Guaje, and in this session, we are going to talk about interfaces or how to interact with Taipei in different ways. This session is divided in three main sections, which are an overview of different ways to interact with Taipei, workflows, and how to make your own workflows. So as different ways to interact with Taipei, we have the project BrainLife. We've been collaborating with the developers of this project, and now we have support for up to 21 applications, which include very common functionalities included in DiPi, such as denoising, reconstruction methods, or tracking. This is a great tool for those who prefer to work with graphical user interfaces instead of coding or command line interfaces. Now let's talk about the DiPi workflows. The DiPi workflows are our own command line interface solution. And we have simplified the system of creating these command line interfaces. Right now we have almost 30 workflows and we keep updating the ones that we have and also we keep adding more. So you have the latest methods and functionalities always available as workflows. Now let's talk about some of, the, of these workflows, how do they work and how to use them. Let's start by a very simple workflow such as the DiPi fetch, which allows us to download some of the data that we include in DiPi. The usage of this workflow is as simple as typing DiPi fetch. And then if you don't know which data sets are included in DiPi or, or what are the names of the data sets, you just replace the parameter of H minus A dash H here by the parameter list. Once you know which data set you want to download, you just have to replace the name of your data set here. Let's see how this workflow works. Here we have two examples that we are going to use in upcoming examples. So if you want to try, feel free to download these two data sets. And once you type each one of these commands, you should see an output that looks like this one here for this command and one like this for this command. Now let's talk about the DiPi info workflow, which is one of the most, which is a very useful workflow that allows us to see a specific or very important information available in BVEC files, B values files, and also nifty files. Some of the parameters included in this workflow are a BVEX tolerance, which is a threshold that we are going to check if the BVEX are in unit vectors, the B0 threshold, which it's, as its name uh, explains, is the customized threshold to identify B0s in our B values file. And it, this workflow also has a B shell threshold that allows us to distinguish between B values or in different shells. Here we have two examples of how this workflow works for two different kinds of files. On the left, we have DiPi info reading a B values file. And on the right, we have DiPi info reading a B vectors file. As we can see here, we can see the indices of each one of the of the gradients and uh, we can see the B values of each one of them. So in this case, we have first the B zeros and it also detects that we have 160 B zero B values and one shell in this file. Now let's talk about the DiPi reslice workflow, which can be handy when you don't have a, a isotropic voxel size, 
and you want to convert your data in to isotropic voxel size data. So this method uses interpolation to readjust the size of the voxels. And we support, we currently support four modes to deal with points outside, outside of the boundaries. And if you select the constant method, you can also select the value that you want to use for the filling. And of course, you can set the new voxel size. Here we have an example of how this workflow works. In this case, for this particular example, we are going to use data that is included in the, in the in DiPy. So if you are using DiPy source, you can you should see uh, once you run this command, you should see an output similar to this one here. If you have an installed version of DiPy, you should see an output that looks like this. Once you have identified which kind of installation you have and where is this data set that we are going to use, you can just navigate to that data set and then run DiPy info and the name of this data set. In this case, anisobox.nifty.gz. The output of info for this particular file should look like this. It tells you that the voxel size is not isotropic and you should reslice it. The good thing is that we have DiPy reslice to do this and its usage is very simple. You just have to type DiPy reslice, the name of the file, the parameters that we covered in the previous slide, and then the new voxel size. In this case, we are going to have a voxel size of three by three by three. The output of this command should look like this. And to check that you have resliced correctly your data, you can just use DiPy info again with the new data, with the new file of the new data. Now we can see as an output that we have a voxel size of the dimensions that we define when we reslice our data. The next workflow we're going to cover today is the DiPy Media Notsu, which is a very handy tool that allows us to create masks from our diffusion data set. The parameters of, the, of this workflow are the radius in voxels that we are going to apply to the median filter, the number of times that we are going to pass the median filter, um, the dilation or the number, the number of iterations for a binary dilation. And then we have the auto crop, which is a flag, a Boolean flag that allows us to crop the original data using the mask that the method just had found. And finally, we can select which indices of our gradients are going to be used to calculate this mask. Here we have an example of how this workflow works. In this case, we're going to use the Stanford Hardy dataset, which we downloaded when we talk about the DiPy fetch workflow. So if you don't know which, where this dataset was downloaded, you can just type echo and the variable DiPy home. It should give you uh, the full path of where your downloaded data sets are located. And once you navigate to that folder, you can type DiPy Horizon, which is our, our tool to visualize different kinds of data. And here is how it looks like. We have included a video of DiPy Horizon reading the nifty file included in this data set. As you can see here, you can change the color map, the thresholds for that color map. You can navigate through different volumes of your 4D file, select different pixels to check the voxels, to check the intensity of that voxel, 
select different slices and change the opacity of these slices. Once you have checked that how your data looks like, we, you can go and run DiPy media nodes. Here is a very basic ex example of how this, how to run this command. In this case, we are using a median radius of four, and we are passing the median filter one single time, and we are applying a uh, two dilation. We are passing the dilation, the binary dilation twice. To calculate this mask, we are using the fifth, the the first five radians in our data set, and we are saving our mask. The output of this command should look like this. And once you have your results, you can visualize them again using Horizon. Here on the left, we have the brain mask that the media node to workflow just calculated for us. And on the right, we have the data masked out using this mask. Again, we have a visualization of Horizon showing us how the results look like. Finally, we are going to talk about type by Horizon because we have been using it, but we haven't talked about all the specific functionalities that this workflow has. So we are going to cover a specific functionalities such as cluster, cluster threshold, and random colors, which are flags or parameters that are applied to TRK files or tractography files. In this case, we are going to use the second data set that we fetch uh, using the DiPy fetch workflow. Here on the left, we have a DiPy horizon using a thresh, we're using cluster of streamlines with a T1 image as an anatomical reference. And we are passing two bundles, which are arcuate fasciculus for the left part and the right part. And on the right, we are also adding the flag random colors, which will add a random color to each one of the TRK files that we are passing to the, to the command horizon. The advantage of using this kind of random colors parameter is that it will allow us to interact with each one of the bundles independently. Notice also how in this case, we also have a new panel that allows us to interact with the clusters of uh, streamlines. And these parameters are the threshold of the clusters, the length of the streamlines, and the size of the cluster. Additionally, we include a help text that will um, guide us to different ways to interact with these streamlines. Here we have a showcase of Horizon loading a whole, a, a whole brain tractogram, compressing the data to its centroids, then allowing the user to select a specific centroids and then refine them and select a and remove streamlines that are not relevant for the streamline that, for the bundle that you want to analyze. And the good thing is that you can save these results. You can start from a whole brain tractography, segment the bundles that you care about, and then export your results. The last part of this talk will be a, about how to create your own workflows. So to create your own workflow, you just have to create a class that inherits from the workflow class. You need to create a run callback function, which will be called by the parent class. 
in the run flow method. The run flow method also includes argument parser parameters such as force the overriding of the output or the version or help functionalities. So you don't have to repeat yourself and code these parts every time you want to create a new workflow. We have simplified the process, so you just have to work on the functionalities that you care, and we will take care of the common functionalities of such as handling the uh, outputs. Last, you have to create an executable file in DiPy bin, which will call the run flow and your new class that encapsulates the behavior of your new workflow. And that would be all for this talk. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for attending.